Hi, I'm Dr. Maunika Bopana. I'm a consultant uh, in the Department of Medical Oncology in Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences Hospital, Kim's Hospital, Sikandrabad. So um, many people think that they've already spoke for so many years and already the damage which has to be done would already have been done to the lungs as well as other organs. So then why should we quit smoking? We might as well continue it. Why should we put in the effort to quit? So this is not the right thought process because irrespective of the number of years a person has smoked, once he or she stops smoking, the positive effects of the smoking cessation start almost immediately. After the last cigarette, within a few hours, the increased heart rate comes down. And within a few days, the nicotine level also comes down in the blood, as well as the levels of other toxic gases which accumulate in the blood, like carbon monoxide, which happens because of smoking. Over the next few days, those levels normalize. Within a few weeks, we see that this hacking cough and breathlessness, which many smokers have because of the bronchitis and a lot of inflammation that is there in the lungs due to smoking, those symptoms slowly start reducing. And by one to two years of smoking cessation, a person's risk of developing stroke and heart disease like heart attacks, coronary artery disease, uh, these risks significantly reduce at one to two years. And, and by five years, the risk of heart and stroke, heart attacks and stroke because of smoking, they almost come back to the non-smoking level. Within five years, this person does not have um, the risk of uh, smoking, uh, the risk of uh, cardiac issues or stroke because of smoking. It comes back to that of a non-smoker. And then by five years, by five to ten years, the risk of developing cancers in different organs of the body because of smoking, which, which becomes very high when the person is actively smoking, that also starts coming down. And by the 50 year of smoking cessation, the risk of lung cancer also comes down to almost the level of a person who has never smoked in his life. So it is never too late to quit smoking. Start quitting today itself. Now is the time to just leave that last cigarette in your hand. So dietary modifications, diet per se is not very closely linked to lung cancer, maybe in an indirect way, but not directly linked to lung cancer as such. But there are many other cancers to which diet is linked. So if a person is consuming uh, diets which are more in refined flour like maida or somebody whose red meat consumption is very high, which is more common in the Western countries, so in such patient, in such persons, the risk of colon cancer, the large intestine cancer is quite high because these foods which are low in fiber, like the uh, foods which are made, the bakery items and all which are made out of maida, refined flour, and also the red meats, they're all low in fiber. They cause constipation and constipation indirectly, long-term constipation is a risk factor for colon cancer. So if by avoiding these foods, we are protecting ourselves or significantly reducing our risk of developing colon cancer. Colon cancer was once a disease of the West only. But now the incidence in India is also increasing because of our changing food habits. So the original Indian diet was a very healthy diet with very, uh, you know, uh, whole grains and a lot of fiber, a lot of vegetables. It was a very uh, healthy diet. And similarly, if uh, one is consuming a lot of, of foods which are high in salt content or nitrates and nitrosamines like pickled and preserved foods, and uh, somebody who's consuming a lot of uh, charcoal fried foods like tandoori, a lot of tandoori items, that blackish colored uh, thing which is there on the layer which is there on tandoori items, that is carcinogenic. It can cause cancer. So these people are at a higher risk for developing gastric cancer or stomach cancer. So by reducing our intake of such kind of foods, we are reducing our risk of gastric cancer. Similarly, if uh, one is consuming a lot of refined sugars or high fatty diet, it can lead to weight gain, cause obesity, and that indirectly can increase the risk of certain cancers like breast cancer, uterine cancer, that is endometrial cancer, and colon cancer also. So by keeping our consumption of refined sugars and very high fatty food like deep fried foods, oily foods, a lot of cheese, high dairy. So if we can reduce or uh, consume these things in a very less amount, as less as possible, we can keep ourselves in an ideal body weight range and not go into the overweight or obesity, which makes uh, all these uh, cancers, um, it makes us much more prone to these cancers because of obesity. 
and consumption of foods which are rich in fiber which are rich in antioxidants like uh, colored vegetables like brightly colored vegetables like red cabbage broccoli green leafy vegetables they are very rich in antioxidants and uh, also uh, uh, foods which are rich in fiber they ensure that our bowel movement like daily a uh, passage of stool is normal and the entire bowel is cleared nicely so that the toxins are not held in the large intestine for days together in a constipated person and that significantly reduces the risk of colon cancer and uh, similarly uh, antioxidants are also rich in fresh fruits so consumption of more fresh fruits and vegetables itself is a, a positive protective factor nuts which have a lot of omega 3 fatty acids they are also antioxidants so nuts like walnuts almonds consuming in a moderate amount every day that also reduces the risk of cancer so although diet doesn't have a direct implication on lung cancer diet can protect um uh, when it is done in a correct way uh, when it's planned correctly can protect against cancer so screening is something uh, it's a test which is used to detect a disease that uh, uh, detect a disease even before it shows any symptoms so that is what is a screening test we want to catch it so early in its course that even before it has caused any symptoms we want to find it the idea of screening is that if we detect a disease early we will be able to cure it in a more easy way and we may prevent it from going into an incurable phase so it's this is not only applicable for cancer screening is done for so many other uh, diseases also including some infections as far as lung cancer is concerned the only screening test which is approved for lung cancer is a low dose ct scan of the chest low dose ct it's called as low dose ct because the amount of radiation that a person is exposed to when he or she is being subject to this low dose ct scan is very very low it's much lower than the conventional ct scan so it's called as a low dose ct scan now does everybody have to do it no everybody does not have to do it only those individuals who are at a high risk of developing lung cancer like those who are heavy smokers heavy in the sense they should have been smoking at least 20 pack years pack years means the number of pack of cigarettes that they have per day multiplied by the number of years for which they have smoked so suppose a person is smoking two packs per day and he's been doing that for the past 10 years his smoking becomes 20 pack years of smoking so he is a high risk individual for lung cancer and these people should be between 50 to 80 years of age and if they are still actively smoking or they have quit within the last 15 years so these are the individuals in whom this low dose ct scan has to be done how frequently it has to be done it has to be done once in a year just like how mammography has to be done once in a year for breast cancer screening similarly the low dose ct scan of the chest has to be done once in a year but only for individuals who are at a high risk of developing lung cancer now there are some individuals who although are non smokers they can um, uh, be uh, residing in places where they are exposed to a lot of radiation like near uranium mines or where radioactive material is mined they are also at a high risk of lung cancer so those individuals can also be screened because uranium exposure is also one of the risk factors for lung cancer although that is there only a small percentage of our population are actually residing close to uranium mines but the biggest risk factor is definitely smoking for lung cancer so as i said screening test is something which detects a disease very early on in its course where it can be more easily treated without having to use complex and costly treatments so if screening can be regularized lung cancer screening then uh, we will be catching because most of the time more than 80% of the lung cancers that we see in our day to day practice are in a very advanced stage now um, uh, that's because by the time it actually causes symptoms the disease is way too advanced when it's in the form of a very small nodule in the lung it may not cause any symptoms then only a screening test like a low dose ct will be able to detect it so if screening can be regularized and we can catch more lung cancers in an early stage then we will be able to prevent that from going to stage 3 stage 4 where cure is difficult to impossible and more costly treatments like immunotherapy targeted therapy drugs have to be used whereas if detected in a early stage then surgery and little bit of chemotherapy or radiation will just cure the disease completely so that is the societal impact that it is actually going to save the burden of um, 
uh, having to deal with a very advanced stage cancer where the lifespan becomes very, very limited. And the other important thing is why a person should quit smoking even after um, having smoked for many years is also to protect his colleagues and his family members from the effects of passive smoking. So stopping smoking not only benefits that individual, it also benefits people around him because passive smoking is also a risk factor for lung cancer. So even if you're not smoking, if your colleague who's sitting beside you is puffing away every day, then that also will increase the risk of lung cancer for that non-smoking individual. 